Hi everybody and welcome to my studio. My name is Lana and I am an acrylic artist so thank you for stopping by my studio today. Well we're going to be painting once again on fabric. Look at these seahorses. Aren't they so cute? I just love them. They're just so cute. I've really been in this oceany kind of painting mode lately so um, I painted up these seahorses just having a blast. And look I used fabric glitter paint on these seahorses. Oh, fabric glitter paint. Isn't that awesome? Okay, so first let me tell you, the pillow cover is on my website. It's my gray white pillow cover, gray white wood pillow cover. And you can get that at lanalam.com. And um, you know, most of you that have been painting with me know that I sell packets on my website, which include step-by-step -step written instructions, step-by-step -step color photos, and the line drawing but I do have occasion where I just sell the line drawing only and this is one of those occasions. Um, because it's such a simple project and you can paint right along with me in the video, this project is just underneath uh, line drawings only on my website. Um, I have included with this one the list of paints that I use in a color reference photo for you but um, it's listed underneath line drawings only. It's not a complete packet like I normally have because you can paint right along with me and it's an easy one and you're gonna have so much fun. That glitter paint, I tell you what, you guys, I just love putting a little bit of bling on anything that I can. So putting it on those bubbles and I did put some on the seahorses as well. Oh, I just love that. So. I have used Deco Art So Soft Fabric Paints and you can get them from their website decoart.com. I think they currently still have all the colors, um, most, most of the colors um, in their fabric paint line. Um, but if you cannot find one and you need to use just regular acrylic paint, you just want to get the fabric medium and add that to your paint. And um, I think you're going to just love painting this. This is a stencil on my website. The words are a stencil and the bubbles are on the stencil with the words. So, but you can just draw them on. You do not have to have a stencil to apply those bubbles. I originally just drew mine, uh, yeah, just drew mine on there. And then after I created the stencil with the bubbles, I came back in and added a few more bubbles. So, um, it is really a super fun, easy project. I cannot wait to paint it with you. So let's grab our supplies and let's get painting. Okay, we're getting ready to paint on fabric. I'm doing one of my pillow covers for you. Um, I've been into this really beach kind of sea theme here lately, so I'm going to continue with that little bit of a theme. And we're doing seahorses on this pillow cover. Um, I just wanted to give you a little tip on transferring. If when you start transferring, it's, it's um, the cardboard is too much give or it's not firm enough. Take the cardboard out and put a piece of wood inside. And uh, that little bit more firmness might help. Also, use a good piece of graphite so that you don't have to go over the line so many times. And I like to use a stylus and I like to use the one that has this little bit bigger end on it because it doesn't dig a hole in my tracing paper. Um, you can print this on vellum and that would help a lot because then you can give just a little bit more pressure on the vellum than you can on this tracing paper. Um, but mostly it's going to come out where it's lines that you can, you can just see and make out, you know, the shapes, which is what you want. But, you know, if you want it really dark, um, those are just some tips that I can give you. And then after you get it transferred on, take the wood out and put your cardboard that's covered with Glad Press and Seal in. And then I always tape my, um, the back of my bag or my pillow cover, whatever I'm painting, so that it does not um, accidentally get flipped up or I get paint on it or it messes anything up. You want this to stay nice and tight against this cardboard. Um, the pillow cover that I'm doing is the uh, white wood grain one that I have on my website. Um, this is the direction that they're all sewn. This one I actually sewed the wrong direction because my tag's over here. But just for demonstration purposes, I decided I would paint on this one for you because for me, it doesn't matter where the tag goes because this is just for me. But um, normally the tag is down here at the bottom. 
it says Lana's Art Design. Um, so I'm turning it this way, but my pillow opening is this way, <laughs> which which won't really matter once you fill the pill fill the cover. But um, you know, I just wanted you to know because if someone notices that the tag is on the bottom instead of on the side where it should be, that's why. Um, I cut this one wrong and sewed it wrong and so now I just have to have it for me. It's not one I could, could sell because I didn't have any others like it. Alright, we are going to start on our seahorses. I'm going to be using fabric paint, but if you do not have fabric paint, but you have a fabric medium, then use a fabric medium. Uh, right now, Deco Art does not have the fabric medium on their um, online store. Um, today is July 22nd, 2020. They still are not up to 100% production, so the fabric medium you cannot get. You can get the transparent medium, which we will be using later to make some bubbles, but um, you can't get this. So if you have another brand of fabric medium that you like, I know that Michaels, when I went online, R. Michaels showed that they had a different brand of fabric medium. So I would say if you're going to use acrylic paints, get whatever fabric medium you can since you can't get this one. But I'm using, I'm going to be using fabric paints, which you can still get most of the fabric paints. I think one of their colors last I checked was sold out. I think it was buttermilk actually. So um, let's get started painting this really nice design. I cannot wait. Um, so I'm going to be using blues and teals because those are the colors that I have in my house. And so I want it to, you know, look nice for my house. So I'm going to put out Indian Turquoise. And of course, Indian Turquoise is also an acrylic color. So if you have the fabric medium, you can just pull out your Indian Turquoise. And I'm also going to put out some Peacock Teal. But I do have my fabric medium out. If I decide I want to add a different color that is in my um, list or in my acrylic paints, then I will pull out a different color. And then I also have Ocean Blue. This is also a color that is in the acrylic line. So I like that they have the same names all the way across their products. So we're going to start painting in. I recommend that you use a little bit older brush, but not a worn out brush because painting on fabric can be a little bit tough on your brushes depending on the fabric. This fabric doesn't feel too bad, but um, I'm going to grab some other brushes here and we're going to start painting in our design. dry brushing so I'll flip this one over and wake up this brush so we're going to start painting in our seahorse now I want um, the chest of it to be lighter I think I'll put some white out as well because I think I want to maybe blend a little bit of white in with my Indian turquoise so I'm just going to load my brush with a little bit of white and then go over to my Indian turquoise and just blend them. I want more white. I want this Indian turquoise to be a little bit lighter. A little bit lighter blue. I might come back and change this color altogether, you know, after I get going here, but um, I'm going to do blue oceany colors and you can do whatever colors you want because it is your pillow for your home or for whoever you are making it for. Now this particular fabric the paint goes on it so nicely. Love this fabric. So we've got a mommy and a couple of babies here on this design. I'm just going to brush mix here so colors probably won't be exactly the same, but that's okay. 
All right, I can't tell what that line is. Where's my pattern? Okay, goes up and around, and that's a deep, deep one there. Boys in here. I stopped right there on that part because I think I want to um, paint that little section a different color. I don't know yet. Let me come in and add some other colors into this. I don't know. This is this is the way I design. I just pull out some paints, pick up a paintbrush, and, and go for it. But I picked this particular pillow cover because it kind of reminded me of driftwood. And so I wanted that kind of look in the background, but you can certainly paint it on any particular fabric pillow cover that you have, or fabric, or bag, or whatever. Um, start picking up I think the ocean blue here I'm gonna put a little bit of that into the tail all right how does the tail go because I can't see my lines and I probably should go to a smaller brush that would probably be very helpful all right I'm grab some of that teal and I want to blend these kind of out. This is just our first coat. I'm going to wipe off the excess paint and pull that blue onto this outer edge here. And just come back and gently blend that. We'll definitely be putting a second coat on here. But it's already looking lovely. Alright, so I'm going to go into that um, ocean blue. It's a very pretty blue. And let's see, back here, I think there's some little bump outs here. Let me see if I can find my line drawing here. Where I drew them. Can't really see them. Kind of bumps out right there. And right there. And then goes up into this. Now I'm just using a um, angle brush. This is a faux squirrel by Dynasty. I like it because it's got a little bit of um, natural bristle. And I think it um, puts the paint down just a little bit easier onto the fabric than a synthetic brush does. picked up just a little bit of white right now so I could kind of ver start burying the color up here just a little bit mixing it with that blue that ocean blue I have very limited colors probably on this and I'm doing a series of three pillows and they'll all have the same colors which will be nice all right I've got to turn my pillow cover so I can pull towards me just a little bit, make sure I don't get it in my paint over here. If I can see my scoop out lines here. Yeah, when transferring your design, you really want to make it where just you can just see the lines. Um, I think that will um, help you not, uh, you know, have all those dark lines that you have to cover up. This is the one line that I kept having trouble when I was transferring it because the material is so dark right here. was a big scoop but I don't remember it being quite that big. We'll just go with it. Right, I'm going to start picking up a little bit more white as I go up here and lightening 
even more. It's already looking so good. Right now I'm just picking up white and letting it blend with the blue that is on my brush. White, even lighter on the face. I don't have any idea what <laughs> seahorses look like, so we're gonna just wing it here. Kind of about how I do things when I'm creating something I've never painted before. It's like we're just gonna wing it. We're just gonna see where the paint takes us. Have no fear. It's already looking so good, don't you think? I am loving it. Love these colors. It looks so good against this background. Okay, so out here there's, um, let's see, what do we got here? We got this fin thing here. So, um, I think I'm going to go into the white and paint that white. I don't really know. I mean, it's still mixing with the blue that's on my brush. It'll be light like that up there. I mean, I might come with the second coat, second layer, and change all of that. But so far, I haven't used the peacock teal. That's the one color I pulled out that I haven't used yet. But I will probably use it for a shading color. And I'm thinking I might put it in there. Okay, and then there's also, also this little part that sticks out below. I'm not really sure what that is, so I'm going to paint it the same color. Maybe I should go find a picture of a seahorse so I know what these parts are. I think, I think that would be a good idea. Okay, so this little section right here, I think I'm going to go into my peacock teal. But I'm going to add some white in with it. Now I'm just dirty brushing, so don't um, feel like you have to wash your brush. And I'm going to paint this in with this peacock teal. Let's see if I even like that. It's almost the same color as this, so I'm going to get a little bit more peacock teal in there. A little bit darker. looking pretty good. So that's just one coat on there. We're going to go over here and paint the little guys in the same way. Maybe make their colors just a little bit lighter. I don't, I don't know if uh, seahorses need to be lighter. Maybe ones. I'm going to get a smaller brush here. Okay, I got a smaller flat faux squirrel. It's a six flat because I didn't have a, I thought I had a smaller ankle one, but I wasn't finding it. So, I'm going to clean this a little bit better. Okay, so uh, on the chest area, we use the um, Indian turquoise with some white. So I'm going to do that again, but I'm going to get a little bit more white in it this time. Make it just a little bit lighter than the mamas. 
little bit more white. Oh, that's a lot more white. So just take your time here. There's no, no need to rush. This fabric paint goes on so nicely. out here. Maybe you want your seahorses to be purple. I don't know. seahorses. You can make them however you want. Now, I do plan on putting a little bit of bling on here, so just so you know. You don't have to do that. It's completely up to you, but the fabric glitter paints are not available on this date. I'm doing this on DecoArt. I got some before all the COVID-19 stuff went into effect, so... See if I can see my lines out here. This is that uh, ocean blue with some white. A little bit more white in there. Make these points a little bit pointier here. Make sure when you're picking up your pillow cover that you don't have any paint on this hand. I did that to one of my pillow covers and was not happy about it at all. Oops, I painted over my, my thingy there, so I'm going to have to... This little thing. I painted over it here. <laughs> so I'm going to have to change that or repaint that part in. Right here. I love these colors, they are so pretty. We went on a cruise one year, it's been several years ago. It was for our 25th anniversary, and we're getting ready to celebrate our 40th next February. And um, ever since I went on that cruise, the ocean colors have been the colors I wanted to have in my house because that cruise was the most relaxing thing ever. It was fun, relaxing. It was a 10 day cruise. We went to eight different ports. And it was just the wonder, a wonderful, wonderful time. Okay, take this white that's in my brush and paint this little part out here. My paint is not wanting to, my brush is not wanting to fill up with paint. Maybe I'm not picking up enough. I'm going to get just a tiny bit of blue in there. Again, I might end up changing that a little bit. And this one has this little thing as well. Okay, so that's one of our small ones. So let's paint the next one. He's going to be the same way. Oops, I just 
picked up peacock teal, so he might be different. <laughs> oh yeah, my peacock teal. I gotta paint that little thing in right there. So some peacock teal and some white. Let's see if I can figure it out here. More peacock teal in my brush. It's really little on this one. So we'll kind of get the idea of it right there. All right, so now we're going back into our Indian turquoise and white. That's what we started out with on the chest, a little more white. And in the in the bigger areas, where I really want to get it into the fabric good. I am scrubbing it just a little bit. Make sure I only go up to that this time. Actually, when I came around, I think is when I covered it up. up a little bit. Got two little bump outs right here. Now I'm gonna start mixing a little white in with my ocean blue. find our again I'm having a hard time seeing these I didn't get my lines on very dark gonna kind of guess on this one. He's gonna be a guesser. here and just go into some white and let it mix with what's left in my brush. I feel like my brush is dry to the bone. Just about covered it up. I know you saw that, didn't you? I'm keeping you on camera. I keep forgetting to look up there. Right. I 
almost done with the first coats. Oh, the tape came in then back here. Got stuck to the table. Okay, let's do this thing back here. up here with our teacock, peacock teal. Okay. All right. That is all of our first coats. I want this to dry just a little bit before we start applying our second coat. This one here is almost completely dry. So by the time I get done with it, the second coats, and move all the way across, they will all be ready, and then we can just go right into our first one, adding details and highlights, and, and um, I think on this one we might do some outlining at the end. I haven't decided yet. All right, let's get to painting on these. My two coats are on, and they're dry. <coughs> second coat goes on so much faster because you know the first coat gets <clears throat> into the canvas my goodness I'm all I'm all scratchy throated today so I want to paint in the eye part so I just drew a circle on here and I'm just gonna paint it in with some white try and cover up my graphite lines because they do not erase off of fabric so if you put graphite lines on they need to be covered up try and keep my circle a circle here so and we'll we'll put two coats in of the white in the eye so I'll let that dry and then we'll come back and do a second coat on there. <coughs> so we're going to start adding some color onto this. Now, you have many options on how you do uh, this. Um, you can keep this all just in blues, which is what I kind of intended to do. I'm not so sure now, but you can add some purple in here. Now, I don't have a, a purple that I like that's in fabric paint, so I pulled out my regular purple paint, and um, I can use fabric medium with it. You could use a purple. You could use a pink on here, make it purple and pink. You could actually use a dioxanine purple. And the so soft fabric. You can use orange, which is kind of what I thought about doing, but I think really I'm going to keep it tone on tone with just the blues. So I'm going to take uh, my ocean blue and I'm going to mix it. I'm going to put some fresh out here and I'm going to mix a little tiny bit of lamp black in it. Um, I actually might check and see if I have an ultramarine blue in fabric paint, so let me check that out. I don't have ultramarine blue, so I'm just going to take some black here. And I think I'll put a little bit of dioxanine purple out and mix that in. These are all my fabric paints. Oh, that one needs shook up. better okay and we're gonna start painting in some uh, details on this I'm gonna start on this one and go along the outside here and I think I'm gonna get a different 
brush. One that's a, a little bit smoother. Okay, so I want to just brush mix these colors. So I've got my ocean blue. I'm going to put a little bit of purple in there and a little tiny bit of black. This is not even going to get close to ultramarine blue, but we're going to get this deep purpley blue in here. A little bit more more dioxinine purple in there. And I think just a touch more. I want it to be a little more purpley, I think. Kind of a, a blue purple, nothing crazy. Okay, so each one of these points has a line coming out from it. So I'm going to <coughs> Just begin floating a line from that point out. Oh, too much, too much paint. So let me wipe that off. Come back and smooth out because I want it to kind of fade away. But we're going to come out from each one of these points. We want to make sure that that kind of fades away at the end. Make sure you are direction following. We're going towards the body here. Take that wet edge of your brush and pull that out and blend it out a little bit. Load a little bit more here. And this one won't get it, but you can already see how we're creating this beautiful little area back here. The chest area will have the same kind of look. We're going to go back and, and do the uh, some more on that outside edge. But with this one here, um, I think I'm going to go with the um, peacock teal on it. If it's not dried up on my palette here. So I'm just going to side load that color. And then we're going to have some lines that go across this way. I think I might add just a touch of that ocean blue in there. So I'm going to mix them together, maybe equal amounts. Now, I don't know how far down they're supposed to go, but we'll go down to here. Okay, Just create those, and I don't think there's supposed to be one up there, so I'm not going to put one up there. I'm going to take this same mix and add just a touch more of the ocean blue in there. And we're going to create some lines out here. Now, you can draw all these lines on. I'm up on the I'm up on tilted up on my brush on the kind of almost the tip of the brush and just kind of skimming it across. I'm not laying it down flat because I don't want a lot of stuff going on there. And then we'll put one here with the same color. And then up in here we're going to have some, and I'm going to take that peacock teal and a tiny little bit of black. And really darken that teal. It's going to be uh, almost a dirty color, and we're just going to create some lines coming in here. There's some points in this, in this one as well. So 
So maybe I'll just go out to those points. It might make it easier on you. So I'll just remove that with some water. Okay, so there's a point here and a point here. And of course we have points that are in the corners. Oops. That piece of tape keeps coming off of there. I'm not really sure why it won't stick. Probably should use masking tape. It's a little bit stickier. Okay. Okay, that looks pretty good there. Alright, I want to come back and do the opposite sides of all of this and all of these with the color that I did. So I'm going to keep it this direction first and we did the ocean blue and some dioxanine purple, a little tiny bit of black, tiny bit of black, and then more blue and more purple. So two blue, two purple, and maybe a fourth of a black, up to a half at most. All right, I don't want a lot of paint on my brush, so I'll just wipe it out. So we're doing like a back-to-back -back one here. I want to do the same thing. I want to come from that point and come out and let it kind of fade out. Tilt up when you're in the tight places and then start laying it down a little bit more flat as you come out here. And then just use the water edge and smooth it out. This is how you control the brush. The brush does not control you. Having enough moisture in your brush is really key when you are floating. If it is not floating well, don't go wash your brush out. Just grab a little dot of water and work it in. Because when you wash your brush out, then you've got to reload the whole thing. Remove a little bit of that right there. Okay, I'm going to come back and do the chest ones, which was peacock teal and ocean blue so we'll go on this side this is called a back to back float basically usually I do it each side when it's still wet and my tape is sticking to the table again. I'm going to have to get me some masking tape and tape that down because it's hard to work when you keep sticking to the table. Okay, isn't that looking good? Okay, I'm going to wipe my brush out. Now you can go to a smaller brush if you wish to, um, if it's helpful over here in this area. A small angle brush or something. I'm going to get a little bit more of that ocean blue on my brush. And then do the opposite side here. It's such a small area you don't want to fill that in so be careful you don't fill it in. We'll be doing all of these exact same steps on the little ones, okay? I'm just going to work on the big one, and then we'll, I may or may not do the small ones on camera. It depends on how much camera time I'm doing right now. All right, so up here we did peacock teal, 
with the tiny, tiny, tiny little bit of black. If you get too much black, just wipe your paintbrush out. Go pick up a little bit of Peacock Teal and blend it in your brush. side here. I feel like it blended out too well. Try and make it look where it's not just a solid hard line on there. Alright, let me add a little another layer of white in the eye here. Okay, I went ahead and did the, finished out the two smaller ones because I want to kind of get an idea of where I'm taking you for the bigger one. So the two small ones are will be done exactly like the big one. So actually I'm copying the big one from the small one and hopefully this will work out since it's such a, a bigger um, little seahorse here. So the first thing we want to do is to float along this edge right here. Now, if it is hard for you to do a float, then you can just dampen that just slightly. We don't want tons of water if we can help it, but um, it helps a little bit. I don't know if it affects the paint adhering to the project or not. So we're going to uh, load for a float make sure I'm doing this with ocean blue and work that into my brush and we're going to go all along right next to the back right here now I'm just kind of letting the brush stick to the surface of the paint that we've already got here I am not trying to work this paint into the fabric in any way. It is mostly kind of just going right on this paint. We don't want to do a big scrubbing motion because that might... I mean we don't really need to do a scrubbing motion. We're just applying paint on top of paint and hoping... Or not hoping, I know it will stick to it, but um, just trying to keep it, um, you know, paint on paint without we shouldn't need to be scrubbing into our fabric because we've already put the paint and gotten it down into the fabric now right here I need to scrub just a little bit because I did not get paint all the way up to that line and I'm going to grab a little bit of water and work that out just a little bit I want this to come out on this bigger one I want it to come out on the chest just a little bit I'll turn that right side up so you can see that. We just put that color right there. I want that to dry before we add the next color on here. So I'm going to kind of bounce around the project a little bit. So <clears throat> let me get my instructions up here so I can see what I did. All right. Um, back here we did dioxanine purple. So... I'm going to side load for a float with the dioxanine purple. And we know dioxanine purple is a more transparent color in our acrylic paints. So we want to try and make sure it stays a little more transparent here for this. So a little bit of water or transparent medium will help. We're going to go all the way up here with this and go around that. And you see I'm just kind of patting that and working it out a little bit. I think all the colors will appear a little bit darker on the smaller ones because it was such a more tighter area. So we'll try to mimic that the best that we can. A 
little bit more paint on my brush here. Okay, I'm gonna gonna hold my my angle brush up and put it right there where that paint ends, going around that curve, and I'm gonna lay it over and work the paint over so it looks like it's kind of folded right there. Kind of like you do on ribbon. So if that if that's helpful. <laughs> okay, and we will definitely need to darken that. That's not near dark enough for me. So um, I want that first layer to dry. Now we're putting thinner layers on so they will not take near as long to dry as what our other layers took, which is a good thing. All right, we're gonna shade on this one with ocean blue for our first shading. Or did I use peacock teal? Let me look at my smaller ones. Um, I've have written on my instructions I used ocean blue, but yeah, we'll, we'll just stick with the ocean blue. I think that's the color I used. So we're gonna use ocean blue right here. Nice soft little float there. And we're going to put some on this smaller one right here. Right there. And I'm going to come down this little, this edge right here with it just a little bit. Now we can't even see our, our um, little line thing that we put in there so I'm gonna put it in with a little bit of peacock teal here on my brush just kind of staying up on the toe of that so I can kind of create that back in there okay okay um, this one here we're gonna shade with peacock teal and just, I'm telling you, just the tiniest amount of black in it. You don't want to get it too dark. We just want to kind of dirty up that peacock teal. We'll see if that works. It's the color like we mixed for making the lines. So we just want to put it right here next to the cheek area. Okay? Now let's see where we're going. The, um... We'll do all the highlights at the same time so we can just go completely around the whole piece. So we're going to go back to shading this section right here. And for our second uh, shading, we're going to mix Dioxanine Purple and the Ocean Blue. And um, I'm probably going to mix one Ocean Blue and one Purple. Um, maybe two Purple, two Dioxanine Purple. Make that a little bit darker richer color and we're going to put this along here and just darken right there and we'll probably come back over when we're done here and just wash some dioxanine purple over that now try to keep this a soft color if you get um, too much paint on your brush then it's not going to stay a soft color. So you really got to work that into your brush with a little bit of water so that you can have a nice soft color. Or use your transparent your transparent medium. That will help keep it a, a sheer color so you don't get um, really hard hard colors on there. I'm going to grab a little bit more purple in the mix I think. bring that out a little bit more and that's looking pretty good we're gonna go back to this side and this side was just um, let me make sure um, yep 
just dioxanine purple it looks like. So I'm going to work that into my brush with a little bit of water. So I have just a little bit of water on my brush. I'm working that in. I'm going to get just a tiny, tiny bit more. I really want, I really want it to look kind of sheer here, so it doesn't lay down too dark of a color. So if it, if I work it into my brush, just the corner of my brush where it's sheer there, then it should make a pretty sheer color along here. A little bit more on my brush with just a little bit of water. thing and above it try and stay off of it and then work that out just or walk it out just a little bit I want to keep it off the cheek area there we're gonna highlight that cheek here in a minute so that that should give you a nice um, soft color of dioxanine purple a gradation of color so I'm going to flip this back over because this should be, well, it's still a little bit wet. We better not do that. I want that to be dry because we're going to wash some dioxanine purple over that here in a second. If any of these do not look um, dark enough, then you can go ahead and just repeat the float of those just a little bit. And what did we use? We used... Um, We use ocean blue and dioxanine purple. I think that's what I already had mixed here. So I feel like a couple of these could be darker. going to make them just a little bit darker. That mix of ocean blue and dioxanine purple I feel like kind of a little bit too light on some of these. Make sure you don't use a lot of water because if it starts bleeding out onto your other fabric there's no cleaning that up. So, Okay, so let's go back over here. This is dry, and our second float is the ocean blue, and we're going to add a tiny little bit of black into it. We're just going to dirty up that blue right there. Just the tiniest little bit of black. Okay, and we're going to take it right next to the spine. on my brush here. I don't feel like it's coming off. And you see how I pity pat. I'm going to mix a little bit more. I'll load my brush up with quite a bit more so I can did not have my brush loaded up near enough. And then a little bit here. Okay, that looks pretty good. Okay, and that one shouldn't need a second um, float on it, but if it does, it's your it's your peacock teal and a little bit of black. And then you can just deepen that just a little bit. But uh, one may be enough on that one. Okay, let's do our wash of purple on here, and then we're going to... Um, start adding our highlights. Okay, I've got a, a wash of purple. Now you can use your transparent medium here and just make a nice transparent color, but I'm doing it with just the water to show you guys how to do it with the water. And we're just going to wash this right along here. Okay. 
okay so that kind of brings that together a little bit maybe just a little bit more I feel like it's my brush off I got it going way too far over okay. all right that looks looks pretty good I know to me it looks much darker on the camera shot than it is in actual in front of me here all right let's go with some white now let's see on all of mine let's see our highlights on the chest it's white on the head um, I don't say what color but I'm sure it's white <laughs> um, on the fins it's white so these two will be white and above the chest is white so everything is done with white oh I did say okay so white is what we're going to be using so I'm gonna load my brush for a float so just side load that paint on there and we're gonna highlight along here and then I'm just going to tap a little bit coming in I don't want any hard lines so don't let any hard lines come in there just kind of tap it into that section there we don't want to completely cover up all of our color that we have here our base color but if we do it's very easy to come back in and just touch it up I did have to do that on the little ones because they were so small that um, kind of started filling up the whole areas there okay so there's our highlight there a little bit of a highlight here we'll let all of these highlights dry and then we will repeat every single one of them so on this one back here we're going to go along oops not that much I'm going to go in between each one of these so I'm just putting a little bit at the edge and tapping down just like we did on the front so just a little bit right there and then scoot it out and then we'll go along this edge and we'll put a little bit along this bottom edge here Okay, we're going to do th the same thing with our back. I'm going to scoot a little bit in there and kind of work it out. Paint a little bit too far over, so we're going to go in the scoop part and then walk it out, just like we did there, only it was out, we're doing in now, if that makes sense. We're scooping in instead of pushing out and just tapping it in scoop it in and walk it in scoop it in and walk it in alright scoop it scoop it scoop it scoop it in walk it in scoop it and walk it now, I don't know if it helps for me to keep repeating that or if you're just getting annoyed that I keep saying it <laughs> so if you get it over too far just take that water edge of your brush and clean off anything that you don't want it's going to clean off pretty easily scoop it and walk it scoop it and walk it 
on the chest we're pushing and walking so I'm going to flip my brush over because that feels like it's a little tight and then this is a little bit bigger area here scoop it we don't necessarily need to walk this in bring it out just a little bit and we're going to follow the entire front part of the face. Let's see, my little ones, I did shade along the bottom on the little ones, so I will do that. So we're going to keep that there. We're going to put some back here at the cheek. I'm just going to finish up with the white, then I'll come shade that cheek. And then uh, we have some here. It's another little bit of a scoop. And just tap. And then we have the tail. I'm going to put a little bit along this front edge here. And a little bit out here. And I did put some out here on this outer edge a little bit. We've got these two bump outs. We want to make sure we can see those bump outs. Okay, let's shade on the face here. And on the face, I did... Where is my face one? Maybe I counted that as the head. Where's the head? Okay. Um, I did the dioxin purple and the blue, but I started out with just the ocean blue. So the ocean blue is all we're going to do. So work that into your brush really good. And then we're just going to put this along the bottom down here. And right up to that cheek where we put the highlight. We'll just do that and we're going to repeat every one of these steps of the shading or, or the highlighting and it's all done with white make sure that your first layer is dry I'm going to go ahead and paint the eye in paint on my brush here going to put a circle inside this circle that's already here. Hopefully I can keep it a circle. And just paint it in with black. I should only take one coat of black right there. And we're going to dot a little highlight on there. You might want to wait till it dries. I'm just going to put it right there. Okay, so I want my white to get dry and then I'm going to uh, apply a second layer of highlight on here. I'll just do that off camera because it's exactly the same way and then we're going to get ready to do some bubbles on here. Okay I've got all my coats of paint on here and uh, now I want to remove my tape because I want to open this out all the way. see our seahorses here. So pretty. So pretty. So I'm going to put a couple more pieces of cardboard in here because I'm not really sure where I'm going to put my bubbles. So I want to make sure that um, I can get that I have to oh, I've turned my cardboard over. I want the, I want the side with the Glad press and seal to be where your fabric is going to paint. So I'm just going to put that in there. And I might put this other smaller one in here up here at the top because I know I want bubbles to come up a ways. And I'm thinking I'll probably put a word on here so I want to make sure I leave room for the word. So I'm going to hang on to, to this one, shake it down that way. And then shake it down this way so that I have cardboard everywhere. I don't really need it over here on this side now. 
um, I'm, we're going to start putting some bubbles on here. So the way I like to put my circles on, and uh, you can use this as a stencil, but you're going to have to tape off a lot of um, area so that you don't accidentally put get paint where you don't want it. I'm just going to draw some bubbles. Now down here, I'm just going to use a pencil to draw them in and try not to draw them too dark so that I can uh, you know, paint them because you can't erase pencil. Um, so, just so you know. Um, and I do have a fabric pencil. These are these can be used on fabric, but it doesn't seem to want to write on this particular fabric very well. And I do have, let me try it, the pink one. I've got one that's got the pink lead in it. These pencils are on my website and they come with pink, green, and white lead and I just keep one of each loaded with each color. So I'm going to see if the pink will write on here. So I want some smaller bubbles around the little guys. So I think I'm going to draw a bubble here. So I can see that. I'm sure that you can't see that at all. So now you can use the pattern that I give you for placement of the bubbles or this is where you can be creative and just decide where you want a bubble. So I've got one there and I think I'll do a couple of smaller ones close to it like they're trailing up. So this is just going to start giving me some placement. I'm going to put one over some over here by this little guy. I think we'll start with one here and then have some trail up for him. I'm probably going to have some even go up onto. So that one's going to go like up on him. I want some coming off, you know, the back back here. That's a bigger one, so I'll do some smaller ones around it. Oops. Broke my lid there. So I'll put one there, put one up here, I think I'll put one up here, and we want these to kind of trail away. Okay, so start, start trailing them away. So I've got these three here, I'm going to put a small one here, maybe a little bit closer to the guy, and then we'll trail some up here. Go up as far with them as you want. And I've got one, two, three there. I think I'll put a couple right here. Kind of close together. I might even put one that's behind another one. So that could be fun. Now if I can tell what I've done there, that will be even better. So let's put a few over here by Mama. I'm going to put one right there that's going to go over the tail a little bit and one down here and some smaller ones I think I'll put one small one that's right here on her We can put a few coming off the back as well. My cardboard's not all the way over here, so I got to make sure when I paint those in that my cardboard is where it needs to be. I'm going to put a bigger one here. And then I'm just going to start making some. Oh, goodness, I keep breaking my lid. I must be doing it too hard on the fabric. I'm just going to put some coming up and maybe maybe a bigger one up here. And this is going to be so much fun. Oh my gosh. I'm so going to love this. Alright. I think I can kind of see those. I'm going to put a couple of small ones. Maybe... Maybe a littler one. Okay, I've got 
a few coming off the top here, but I want a few more, so I'm going to put a few more. Let's get a big one up here. It's a bigger one. And maybe a little bit bigger one down here. So I think that's a good start. I'm going to, I think I want some in between these guys. I think I'm just going to start with that many. That seems like a lot of bubbles, but you know, you can do less. So you can definitely start with less bubbles on there. I feel like I have a ton of bubbles. All right, let me get the cardboard situated in here. I need this one back over here where it was at. And that one up to the top. So I just want to make sure every place that I have a bubble, I have cardboard behind it so it doesn't go through to the back side of my pillow. Okay. And I might come in and put some bigger bubbles on here after I get some of these smaller ones done. But uh, we're going to start on the smaller, you know, all the bubbles that I've got on here now. And then I will add from there because I, I really feel like I want a couple like that are more over and a few bigger ones. So let's uh, get ready to start on these. I'm going to use a... I'm going to use uh, a chisel brush. This is a number six. A number four would be good for some of the smaller ones, but if you were going to use an angle brush, which would work great for these, I recommend you having a quarter inch and a three-eighths inch, maybe a half inch for some of the bigger ones, but uh, have a few sizes of brushes so that you can um, work around and get those bubbles just like you want them. Okay, I'm gonna do a couple of the bigger bubbles on here. I'll probably do three or four of them to show you how I'm doing them so that you can um, do all the rest of them the same way. And like I said, you can put as many bubbles on here as you want. And I know you still cannot see my, probably my line drawings that I have on here, but I have them. Okay, so you are definitely going to need some transparent medium. You can thin it with water, but I just don't know how well the paint will stick to the fabric if it just has water in it, you know, without anything underneath it. So I got my uh, transparent medium right here. My brush is loaded. I'm going to get just a tiny bit of the uh, Indian turquoise and mix that in there. So it's kind of a, a transparent color. This will help help it to be transparent. So you're going to paint in one of your circles with this color. It's going to be very light and pale. If you um, drew yours on with your pink dressmaker's pencil like I did, you can just blend that pink right into the color and it will disappear. No need to worry about that. Um, along the bottom, I just want to put a little bit of the ocean blue along the bottom here. Just a, a small little float of it. Don't lose the shape of your bubble. I feel like I just lost the shape of that one. We still want to keep everything nice and light. And then along the top, if it's a smaller one, you can just take your detail liner probably and do this. The bigger ones, you'll want to float a little bit of white on there. This is just straight white. It is not thinned down. Along the top, I'm going to put just a little bit of reflective on the bottom. And uh, that's all we have to do to the bowls. So you're using Indian turquoise and the um, ocean blue and white. So I'm going to go over here. I have a couple of bigger ones over here. So I'm going to load my brush up with my transparent medium. Hopefully by the time this video comes out, I will have some on my website to sell. Okay, this is a big bubble here, so I'm just going to fill it in with this color that's mixed with the transparent medium that 
don't put too much paint in your mix there. You want to make sure this stays a nice light color. And then you can work it out into that pink there. Then I'm going to side load a little bit of ocean blue in my brush. This is a bigger bubble, so I got a little bit more paint in there. I want to do this while that other color is wet so I can blend it into that color a little bit. And work it up in there just a little bit. And then we're going to get some white. I have to get that blue out of my brush. I thought I could do it with the blue in there, but I can't. This will be straight white. And we'll go up here. And like I said, on the smaller bubbles, you can just use a round brush or a detail liner. And don't feel like you have to make perfect. I mean, this highlight can be coming into the bubble a little bit like that. I mean, that's, that's super cool. Be a little bit creative. I need a little bit more brighter white up here. Let that come into the bubble a little bit and then a little bit kind of going out to the other side of the bubble. I definitely need that to be brighter. There we go. And I, I like that light kind of going through there, so I'm going to go back to this one and put a little bit of the highlight kind of going through that bubble a little bit. And then I'll wide angle out. You can kind of see the bubble now at a distance. And uh, isn't that super cute? I did a couple of small ones down here to test how I wanted to do it. This one definitely needs a bigger highlight on it. But uh, those bubbles are awesome! So I'm going to do one more for you, so let me zoom back in, but they're all going to be done the same. I'm going to rinse out my brush, load it with the transparent medium, get a little bit of Indian turquoise and blend that in with the transparent medium, keeping it nice and light in color, and then apply it to your circle. Again, if you've used a dressmaker's pencil, you can just work it out to that line and let that line blend in with the paint. If you've done it with a regular pencil, uh, it will be a little bit more difficult to cover up and your bubble might end up being darker than you want. Okay, so we want to work wet into wet. So I've side loaded a little bit of ocean blue, for, just for the bottom part. I have to rinse out and get the moisture out of my brush and pick up some white. My white is starting to dry out over there. And put some white along the top. And then a little bit maybe bouncing out over here on this side. And how fun are those bubbles? And so incredibly easy to paint. Just having that little bit of transparency is what is important. So the transparent paint is pretty key to uh, making these bubbles work on fabric. You know, if you're on wood or something, you can just use water or a glazing medium and get them nice and thin. But glazing medium will get sticky pretty quick, so be sure and work quickly with each buzzle, uh, bubble, <laughs> but uh, I think uh, these are going to be just fabulous when I get them all painted in here. So I am going to go off camera and finish all of my bubbles, and then uh, I'm going to see if I want to put you know, something growing in the water here, or maybe I just want to put some kind of saying on this side. I haven't decided, so I will be back. Okay, let's finish this pillow cover up. I have my um, ocean blue and dioxane purple and black and I'm mixing it here to make a really dark blue color for stenciling close to a black but we don't want it to quite be black. I think black would look fine. So I created this stencil. It says let your dream set sail. It also says ocean breeze and then I added bubbles on here. So if you don't want to draw the bubbles, 
then you can stencil them and do it all at one time. You can stencil in your light transparent color and then dab in your darker color down here and then just add some white at the top. Um, so let's add this lettering on here and see if I'm even going to like this color. This is a really dark blue and we don't really have this dark of a blue anywhere in the project. So I think I'll add maybe a little bit of peacock teal out here because I, I don't even remember if we used the ocean blue in this project. It's been a few days since I worked on this. And I'm just using a makeup sponge, pouncing straight up and down. I think I'll do Let Your and Set and Dreams and Sail. Maybe I'll do it in a different color. See if that sets it off. Just try something different. Mix it up. You can do just straight black, which is normally what I do when I'm stenciling on fabric. And I have taped it down everywhere that I want to make sure that I don't go and get into another area. I'm just going to take a peek here. Yeah, that's looking really nice. Okay, so now I'm just going to go into um, some white and peacock teal here. Just dirty brush right into that. Maybe a little bit of that blue in there. Word dreams and sail in this color and see if, how that's going to look. Hang on to your stencil if it starts bouncing. Don't push and mush and scrub or anything like that because you can come back and add a second layer on here. So. completely different color than that one up there, so let me grab some more of my oops, wrong color. Peacock teal is what I want. Peacock teal. Mix a little bit of that in there. straight up and down no scrubbing or pushing at it it's just a straight up and down tapping lightly tapping you don't have to mush it you don't have to like really dig into it it's just a you know a simple straight up and down tapping Hold your stencil down if it starts bouncing anywhere. Okay, I'm going to go back into a little bit of darker mix here. And redo those. Not sure I got my mix right, but I'll tap a little bit of this on here. Places. 
Oops, got it in my got it in my dark letter up there. So I need to fix that. Oops, not doing so well covering that up, am I? Just letting it all get in there. Ideally you want two different sponges for the two different colors, but I do not have two different sponges here, so I didn't pull a second one out, so I'm Okay. Alright, let's look this up. My stencil is I need to take this part out because it came off of my stencil and I had to tape it down. I like the darker color on there, so I think I'm just going to go back over everything with the darker color. So I'm going to lay my piece that came off my stencil back in here. And then lay my stencil back over my letters. You should be able to line it up pretty good since you've already painted it. Press all these pieces of tape back down. Make sure everything's good, and then we're just going to go with that darker blue color because I like it a little bit better. So it's your peacock teal and a little bit of black. I like the words being darker. We're just putting white layers on here, so don't worry about, you know, if you feel like you're getting a lot of paint. We're not really, because we're just tapping on some light layers. Because we're not pushing it, we're mushing it in there. Alright, mix a little bit more here on my sponge. And do another layer here. Some of that other lighter color shows through, not a big deal. I just liked that darker mix a little bit better. I might just tap this over these letters to make sure everything is cohesive. Just a light little tapping. Okay. Let's see how that looks much better. I like that much better. Okay, let me get this piece off. It's really wet with paint now. Yours will be connected. You don't have to worry about that. Mine just came apart. And then I want to connect all of the places that are open. So I'm going to take some of that mix that's on my palette here and close all of my openings. I can find. That one kind of closed on its own. A little bit more of the teal mix here and I'm getting way outside of my line there. Close up all your bridges. And I didn't get enough paint right there on that letter. You probably want to use a liner to do all this. I'm using a small round brush. Okay, S down here. Close those little spaces up. And then we can add some bubbles around the words if you want to, but uh, right now I'm not going to, but I do want to add a little bit of bling on here.
Okay, I'm going to do my bubbles. Make sure your cardboard is back over here on the side it needs to go on. I'm going to use the fabric glitter clear ice, but if you have the fabric medium and ice crystal, I would mix those together and use it. I have also used um, galaxy glitter on my fabric and heat set it, so you could mix a little bit of that with some of your fabric medium. So I want my bubbles to be the sparkly part. So I'm just going to paint all of them in with a coat of this fabric glitter. And let those bubbles sparkle. down to a small round brush when I do the smaller ones and then you can decide if any of your seahorse seahorses get the sparkle on them I'm thinking maybe doing the back fin and this lower fin and this fin right here just to sparkle up a little bit goes on pretty quickly and one coat is general it's all I've used but you can come back and add as many coats on here as you want make sure your my cardboard's not down down there so to be careful don't push too hard I don't want it to go through this other paint that's already on here and dry should block it a little bit a little bit more up here Alright, I'm going to get a smaller brush now and finish out those other ones. I'm just going to go with a round brush. Be careful not to lay my arm in the wet one, because then I'll just track it across my project here. It's best if you work your way from the top down. That way you're not laying your arm across bubbles you've already painted. What a fun pillow cover. I'm just doing the bubbles right now. Just the bubbles. Put some on that one, but I must have been the one I laid my arm across. that is all the bubbles I'm going to do. I am going to do their little fin things here. That's by their head. Not quite that much. And I think I'll do their back fin. Very 
hot in my room this morning, so it's really drying this paint fast. Oh my gosh, how fun. We'll do this little part down here. Not really sure what that is. Seems like it's something coming from the other side. But. And that is all the bling I think I'm going to put on there. And then you can decide if you want to go back and add more to any of your bubbles. I mean, the more layers you put on, the more glitter you will have. So some of these big ones, I think I definitely want to add a second layer on. Really make them sparkle. And then I think we are going to call this one a pretty completed project. I'm going to let it set for a couple of days and see if I want to add anything else to it. But I think it's kind of right where I want it to be. A fun, whimsical little cold cover. Would look great in any child's room. A couple of these small ones need a little bit more bling on them. So just put it where you feel like you need a second third layer, whatever. Mine's drying very fast because I have my ceiling fan on and it is just crazy hot in here this morning. We're supposed to get a cool down this afternoon. That would help. Okay. Make sure we got all the blingy parts blinging up. good there. I really like how it is. Um, let me move my paints out of the way here so I can wide angle out a little bit. You can see the whole thing. Look at that. That is so cute. I love it. Let your dreams set sail. And you can put some bubbles over here. You know, bring them all over into the words if you want to. But I kind of wanted just the bubbles there. But I think it turned out awesome. I hope that you guys have enjoyed painting this one with me. Um, thank you for purchasing your pillow covers if you bought some from my website because that helps St. Jude's a lot. And um, give me a thumbs up, a like, share, comment. I love y'all. Thanks so much for painting with me. I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.